This is a Dell Wise 5060 thin client. I bought it on eBay for $35 shipped. And I got the thin client and a stand with the screws and a power supply. And the thin client includes a 16 gig solid state drive and four gigs of RAM built in. So if you bought one of these and want to install your own software on it, here's how you do it. So you're going to need your software on a bootable flash drive, probably Linux. Windows is a bit too big for the 16 gig drive. When you power it up, hit the delete key a whole bunch of times so it goes into the BIOS. There we go. So you're going to get the screen asking for a password. And the password for all of these Dell Thin clients is Fireport with a capital F. Then you hit enter. So now we're in the BIOS. So by default, the BIOS for this thin client won't boot a USB stick, and we need to fix that. So if we go over here, there's a section called Boot from USB, and we need that to be enabled. Also, some things we should change. Boot mode, we should probably change to both, or UEFI, if we're going to use a modern operating system. Um, depending on what you're using for, power loss recovery might be useful. This tells it that as soon as you plug it in to boot up automatically, if you're going to use this as some sort of home server or router or home assistant, this would be a good option to set to always on. Uh, on the boot page, by default, it's going to boot to the internal SSD first. And we would like that to not happen. We would like to boot to the USB hard drive, which is actually our USB flash drive. So you can either take the hard drive and hit the plus key to move it up, or you can take the SATA git drive and hit the minus key to move it down. Either way, the USB hard drive needs to be above SATA. So then we exit and save changes, plug our flash drive in, and we should get it to boot from our Linux installer. So here we come, we're back in the BIOS. And there we go, try to exit Ubuntu without installing. You could of course install it if you want to, but this should work for any Linux distribution or anything that has an installer on a USB stick. Windows, as I said, Windows 10 is a bit too big to fit on here. You might have better luck with Windows 7 or something like that. So let's see what this thing looks like on the inside. So there's three screws back here we gotta take off to get in. And the screws don't feel great. Don't have a lot of hope that they're gonna go back in cleanly, but we'll see. The back here you can see we got power, Ethernet, two USB 3, two USB 2, and two display port. On the front we got headphones and two USB 2. So now the cover should just pull off. It does. So now there's a plate here that's kind of in the way. So you have to take five screws off to get the plate off. So now that's unscrewed, we can pull this off. There's a little wire that holds the speaker in, so we can't pull it all the way off. Let me pull the speaker wire out. We can at least get a look at what's in here. So this is the CPU under this heatsink. It's passively cooled, so air is just flowing through it. Um, this right here is an M.2 slot that fits a wireless card, which this model doesn't have. This is the SSD, and it's actually a full-size SATA connector. So you could pull this SSD out and plug it into a PC if you wanted to image it that way. And that's really all there is. The only thing we have on the inside is the optional Wi-Fi card, and that's the only thing we can add. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.